Hello everyone, it's Friday and that means it's time for our next episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Last time I finished up our discussion of the Toy Box economy system by presenting a demo of how you might use it to create a game like Dreamlight Valley in the Disney Infinity 3.0 Toy Box. And uh, one of the things that I showed you was an idea that I had for crafting. But I mentioned that I also had another idea, but I was going to wait to share that with you. And now is that time. <laughs> so before we get into today's lesson, I want to present that idea because that's going to help explain why you want to use the creativity toy that we're going to talk about today. Now this idea is really a variation on the first idea. And you'll remember we had set up Merlin's tower over here with Merlin. And when we first talk with Merlin, he sends us on a little quest to gather the materials that he needs to craft something for us. And once we collected all of those materials and we returned to him, we used a storefront here in order to display a shop menu where we could get the crafted item for free. And of course, the storefront only lets you sell toys that can be placed through the toy box editor. You cannot sell packs or tools. But we can use this exact same logic. The only difference is we're going to replace the storefront with an object generator. So I've deleted the storefront. And instead, we're going to put down an object generator. And I'll place that right over here. Okay? And so the only difference in the logic is that coming out of this logic gate, logic gate number two, we're going to do a new logic connection on output. We're going to come over to the object generator and we're going to select a pack or a tool. So we could pick anything in here that we want Merlin to craft for the player. We could pick, for example, the toilet paper launcher. <laughs> all right. So now when we collect all the materials and we return to Merlin, he's going to give us the pack or the tool that we specified here, which in this case is the toilet paper launcher. Now, you come out of the editor here. Whenever I have used the object generator in the past to reward the player for completing some game or quest, someone usually asks this question. What's the point of rewarding the player with something that they already have? I mean, the player can just go into their packs and tools menu here and they can pick any of the packs and tools that they already have and use them whenever they want. So the object generator seems like a worthless creativity toy to use. Well, that's true unless I take away their packs and tools when they load up my toy box. <laughs> if they don't have access to those things then the object generator here suddenly becomes a very valuable toy that gives the player a very valuable reward. And that gives the player an incentive to play the game or complete the quest that offers that reward. And fortunately, there is a creativity toy that lets you do just that. It's the Packs and Tools Manager, and that's the topic for today's lesson. And you'll find that in the creativity Toys drawer, right here. And so I'm gonna drop this right here. And um, this toy was available, made available in Disney Infinity 2.0. So it's available in 2.0 and 3.0. And it lets you decide which packs and tools the player can use in your toy box. So I've placed one here. Let's open up the logic menu and take a look at it. The first thing you'll notice is that there are no properties, but we do have an option called set packs and tools. And when we select that, by default, all we have in this list is the magic wand. And um, <laughs> that's the only thing that's here, and there's no way to delete it. So they will always have the magic wand available. Um, if you have a toy box game maker that's set to disable it, like this toy box does, as you saw last time, then in that scenario, they can't do anything with it. They'll still have it, but they can't do anything with it. Um, so there's no way to get rid of this. 
But we can add to this list, and if we select the Add New, that opens up another menu with all of the packs and tools that are available. And so you can select out of this list anything you want the player to be able to use in your toy box and leave out all of the things that you don't want them to be able to use. Okay, so we're just going to give them the climbing hook and the star command blaster and of course the magic wand. All right, now this toy, like so many of the others we've looked at recently, is not activated by default. You have to use a logic connection to turn it on. And so we're going to come over to our buttons over here. And I'm going to use the level starter to turn this on. So on the level starter, we'll do a new logic connection on Catalyze. And we'll use this to take a look at the behaviors for this toy. You'll see there's two behaviors. You can activate it and deactivate it. And again, deactivate it is the default state. So I'm going to use the level starter to activate this toy. And I will use the off button that we had set up previously to turn that off. So a new logic connection on that button when pressed. We'll come up to our Packs and Tools Manager and deactivate it. And then if we open the logic menu, there are some logic connections. There's two trigger signals this will broadcast, activated and deactivated. So when you need to know when this is turned on and off and you want other toys to respond to that, you can use these trigger signals for that. Okay, so we've hooked that up now. And uh, let me go ahead and throw another button down here just to test this a little easier so that we don't have to run through this entire mission again. So on this button, we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. We'll come over to our tools and we'll select the toilet paper launcher. And let me move this button over just a little bit. Okay. So let's come down now to our little command center over here. And we're going to push the button that's hooked up to the level starter and that will start everything. Okay, and the <laughs> little thing up in the upper left is kind of updating itself. There it goes. Now we have the money manager active from last time. And now the uh, Packs and Tools Manager up there should be active as well. So if we open up the Packs and Tools menu, you'll notice the only thing available here is the magic wand. There's nothing else in this list. And if I select anything or try to, <laughs> there's just nothing here to select. But if we head up to the top of this hill, and it might have been quicker to put all of this down below where the other buttons are. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Whoa! Uh, where did we end up? <laughs> oh good, he grabbed the ledge. <laughs> Thought I was sending myself back there. And I can't quite get up there from here. All right, there's Merlin. I want to give him a wide berth. I don't want to access his quest. All right, so we come over here and we'll just kind of bypass him with this button. That puts the object generator there. And now we have access to our toilet paper launcher. <laughs> I love that thing. All right, a couple of things to note. We have the toilet paper launcher, but if we open up the menu, you'll notice that is not here in the menu. And if we select the option at the bottom there to swap, you'll see it is actually in the menu, along with our other two tools. So we do have this available to us now. And I can pick this, and now we have our grappling hook. And if I swap again, we can go back to this. So now we've picked up the toilet paper launcher 
and we can carry that with us through this adventure. And uh, so that makes the crafting with Merlin a lot more valuable. And that makes uh, a game like a shooting gallery or something much more valuable too, because now you can take that uh, tool that you win and take it with you, whereas you wouldn't have had access to it before, because now the Packs and Tools Manager is restricting you. Now, it's important to note that the Packs and Tools Manager only applies to this toy box. So if we were to go through a toy box door into another toy box, the player's packs and tools would be reset and everything would become available again. And you could place a packs and tools manager in both toy boxes and configure them the same way, and that would restrict what the players could use in both toy boxes. But um, any packs or tools you pick up in one toy box, like we just did for the toilet paper launcher, would not be carried through to the next toy box when we go through that toy box door. You'd lose it. And so that's important to know. So that's the Packs and Tools Manager. It's a very easy toy to use and one that I highly recommend using if you plan to use the object generator or a loot chest for that matter to award the player a pack or a tool. Because again, let me, uh, <laughs> I gotta come back down here to turn off the uh, system here. <clears throat> I'll just show you one more thing and then we'll be done. But if we turn off the system here, you can use the object generator to give the player a pack or a tool. There's also a limited number of them you can do through the loot chest. You have the Pixar ball, the frying pan, the TNT pack, the Star Command Boost Pack, and the Silent Warrior Pack. So you can also use a loot chest to award a pack or a tool to the player, although your options there are much more limited. But that is another way to go. And so, again, the Packs and Tools Manager is very valuable if you want to use a loot chest or an object generator to give the player a pack or tool as a reward for a quest or some game. But that's all for me today. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe for more Disney Infinity toy boxes and tutorials like this one. And leave a comment if you enjoyed today's tutorial, or you at least found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and have a great weekend!